Is there a type of client to, that this works best with? You know, when I think of whenever the word philosophy is mentioned, I'm thinking of somebody who's pretty high functioning. Intellectual. Yeah, intellectual. Yeah. And well, we've been real lucky. Uh, I think I, one of the things that's really been exciting for me is that. Uh, uh, I hesitate to say all, but, <laughs> but he'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to say all. Uh -huh. uh, for the first time, I'm able with the developmental counseling and therapy model to work with children. And uh, suddenly I understand, oh, this is how children are making meaning in sensory motor concrete operational frame. Oh, I tend to be up here with my abstractions. I've got to change my language frame. Now, helpful in that process has, of course, been my uh, wife, co-author, sure. uh, co-presenter Mary Bradford Ivy, mm -hmm. who really has taught me so many and so central to these issues. So and in that sense, children is one area that I've learned to cope with. Uh, although my first successes with the model really go back to work in depression. And it's been really good there. Uh, Sandra Gazza de Giglio does wonderful work with perpetrators of family violence. Uh, David Boyer, a uh, student mm -hmm. of mine, does wonderful work with uh, really seriously distressed uh, adolescents. And, almost seems like DCT is made for the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. So at least in, in, as far as the theory goes, with you adapting to each presentation, it really ought to work with everybody. But let's, let's be realistic. Uh, nothing works with everybody, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 gave, gave, it's given me a way to integrate a lot of things. Like I, you mentioned Lazarus. I love his sure. work. Uh, Ellis, uh, a Treasure Rogers, Jenlin, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. It gives me a way to, to learn and to integrate in my own way. And other people, I'm delighted with what I see, students mm -hmm. and other professionals who've adapted this model, where they can go and how much they can do. In a minute, uh, we're going to be seeing this interview. Uh, what should we look for? I mean, what, uh, what were your goals in this interview? Uh, well, the goal at the beginning is, is kind of in that first question, uh, what would you like to happen? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always done that, but again, solution has clarified this for, for me. Mm -hmm. What does a client want to happen? What is the client's goal? And Ken Blanchard once said, if you don't know where you're going, mm -hmm. uh, you may end up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that sense, I really like to start with what, what does a client want to have happen? Are there steps or phases that we'll go through in this end? Uh, so we'll, we'll, the client will basically say, in one sense, she kind of wants to... Because, you know, these, this is the end of the series. She wants to go back and look at it. So we basically ask, I'm asking her to tell stories. Uh, along the way, uh, I do ask her to generate some positive strengths. And uh, in this case, uh, we develop a positive family strength. And that process of developing family strength is kind of classic uh, DCT or integrative stuff for me is that I'll ask for a positive story because I really don't like to work with problems. Imagine that the client has a problem, but then I want to stop that for a while and hear strengths because I think a person is unsettled unless they have some really some strong points to work with. And then I hear the story, but then that's the concrete narrative. But then I want to get the sensory motor aspects of that, and I'll ask her for an image. So I have that goal clearly in mind before I start to physicalize uh, a positive story or two. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the, and these are really the experiential concrete stuff. But then they can serve as reflection, things we can reflect upon in dealing with issues in, in, in the past. This client said, I'd like to look about how the, more or less thing she said, something to the effect, I'd like to look at how the past affects the mm -hmm. present. So I went to the past for positive images. Now, in this tape, it's, you know, in a sense, Robin is wonderful. She's almost a little mm -hmm. too healthy uh, at this stage. I, I feel like a cleanup hitter. There, the bases mm -hmm. are all clean. Just mm -hmm. gonna, I can walk the games over. And, but, uh, so we're just trying to find some positive strengths to move on. And clearly... Uh, mm -hmm. so, the, so the goals then in a typical integrative interview would be... The, can you help me with that? Define strengths. Okay. Client strengths, which we then right. superimpose on client problems. Yeah. Okay. Link strengths, which can, we can superimpose on client problems. So in a sense, instead of starting out with what's wrong, you're starting out with what's right. right. Yeah. And then how does yeah. that... Yeah. The basic structure is a short narrative of the problem. Uh, I would like to spend, if it's longer term thing, I would like to spend 
pretty much an interview or two, just developing a solid base of strengths, not totally ignoring the problems. Mm -hmm. But once we've got the strengths, then going at the problems mm. uh, carefully. And I would like to go to the problems from a body level, mm -hmm. from a story level, from a reflective level, and from how the self develops in the system.